Hello, this is Karen Rhodes with HP Networking, and today we're going to go through some common data center configurations on HP and Cisco switches. Okay, so throughout this video you'll see the HP commands on the left, the Cisco commands on the right. HP, we're uh, running these commands on a 5830AF with uh, Comware 5.2, and on the Cisco we're running this on a 6509 with the Cisco iOS 12.2 uh, operating system. So the first things that we're going to do is basically set a name for the device. We will go in and create a VLAN, assign an IP address to the VLAN, give it a description, and then we'll go to an Ethernet port, in this case a gig port on each one of the devices, and we will set the speed, duplex, and the access uh, VLAN for that particular port. Okay, so this is the HP switch that we're starting off with, and we go into System View to change our context. Now you see uh, the host name is currently set to ABC and we'll go ahead and use the sysname command to change that over to HP. So the device is now known as HP. Go into VLAN 5, interface VLAN 5, give it the IP address of 1.1.1.1 slash 24 mask and then give it a description here. We'll go with VLAN 5, be ever so creative. So pretty easy. Uh, Display this is something that's unique to HP, so if you're in the context of a VLAN or an interface, you can actually just type, type in display this, and it will show you exactly that configuration from your running config without having to go out and then come back in. Now we're going to go to a gig interface 1020. You see the speed options there. We are going to set it to gig, duplex, there are your options. We're going to set it to full. Then we'll go ahead and set the type as an access port and we're going to set what VLAN we want that access port to have access to. And once again display this and it shows us the interface GIG1020's config. Pretty easy here. Okay, now we're going to perform the same actions on the Cisco side. Config T to get into the proper context, then hostname Cisco to change the hostname from XYZ to Cisco, then interface VLAN 5 and IP address 1.1.1.1 slash 24. Then the description, we're keeping it as VLAN 5. And try to keep everything as similar as possible between these two. And then show run interface VLAN 5, you've actually got to back out two contexts or preface that command with the word do, D-O and it will allow you to do that command from uh, another context. And then interface VLAN 5, you, you see all the information there. We go into a gig port here on uh, 4 slash 20. See that our speed options, set it to gig, duplex, went ahead and set it to full, switch port mode access, and then set the VLAN that we want access for on this port, which is VLAN 5. Then we exit out of here and go back to our main prompt and then we can do the show run interface gig to show the 4 slash 20 interface. So here are the commands side by side just in case you wanted to review those. Okay so now we're going to go into aggregating links together. On the left hand side you see the HP configuration. We create a bridge ag 10 and then we go into the ports 1011 and 1012 tell them that they belong to bridge ag 10 then go back to bridge ag 10 and that's where we will actually set that it's a trunk that the uh, vlan 1 and vlan 5 are permitted over that trunk and then we'll go ahead and display the config on the right hand side is the cisco commands I couldn't fit it all in one column so we kind of had to break it up into two but on here we have a port channel 10 and then we configure it as a dot one q encapsulation uh, since Cisco has the option of ISL or dot one q uh, we have have to have that in there uh, then there's the native VLAN the allowed VLAN and then set it in as a trunk then you go to each of the two ports that you want on that trunk in this case gig 51 and 52 and once again you repeat those commands so you you tell it that it's a dot one q VLAN 1 and VLAN 5 that the port is a trunk and then you tell it that it is in the channel group 10 and the mode is on. There's some other options for the, the channel group mode like auto if you wanted to but on is pretty uh, pretty much what I like. 
and then going ahead and showing each one of those interfaces. Okay, so we're on the HP switch, and first we'll go ahead and quit out of the uh, gig1020 context back to our, our home context. Go into interface bridge aggregation 10. Tell it that the link aggregation mode is dynamic. And then we will go to each one of the individual ports that we want in that bridge ag, in this case gig1011 and 1012, and we'll tell them you're part of bridge uh, port link aggregation group 10. And we'll do the same thing for gig1012. Tell it to point back to that config in the group 10. Okay, so those two ports now know that. Now we hop back to the bridge aggregation 10. And here's where we're going to actually configure how that bridge ag should work. So port link type is trunk, port trunk PVID, which is your untagged traffic. What VLAN is it going to go over is the PVID. It's going over VLAN 1. You don't actually have to specify that because it's going to be 1 by default, but I wanted to put it in here so you guys could see that. Uh, then there's port trunk permit VLAN 5 saying, hey, look, VLAN 5 is permitted. As soon as you did that, you see that it has configured the gig 1011 and 1012 for you. So all we actually did at console was tell ports 11 and 12, hey, you're part of Bridge Act 10. But by going ahead and, and doing this config on the Bridge Ag, it actually configured the ports for us. So here's our Bridge Ag. We see that we've manually put those commands in. But if you go to the physical interfaces, you see that we didn't put any of these commands in. The switch just did that for us on ports 1011 and on 1012. So once again, go into the context and type in dis this, which is short for display this, and it'll show you that particular uh, command set. So let's move on to the next. Okay, so we are going to do the same tasks that we just performed on the HP switch on the Cisco switch. So you see how they are similar and different. First thing is go into the right context with the config T. Then we create our logical port, interface port channel 10. Tell it it's a switch port, and then tell it that the encapsulation type is .1Q. This is something we didn't have to do on the HP side. Uh, Cisco has the proprietary protocol of ISL, or it can use the standards-based protocol, which is .802.1Q. I don't ever see anybody using ISL even in all Cisco environments, so .1Q is what, what you'll normally see. Uh, switch port trunk, native VLAN 1, sets the uh, VLAN for untagged traffic that's going across this trunk to go into VLAN 1. Once again, you don't have to do that one, uh, but I want to make sure that we're, we're doing as like to like as we can in this config. And then we're permitting VLAN 5, setting it as a switch port mode trunk. Then we're heading to the physical interfaces, 5 slash 1 and 5 slash 2. We're basically repeating the same commands. Switch port, switch port trunk encapsulation.1q, setting our native VLAN as 1, our, our allowed VLAN is VLAN 5, telling it it's a trunk. And then we're going to do a channel type. So I'll wait until the command gets there. Here we go. So the channel group 10 mode on, you have the option of on. You can also set it to auto or desirable, and there's lots of different options there for, for your channel group. Um, that is beyond the uh, content that we're going to cover in this particular web webcast. But uh, if you're interested in the different options, please look up the Cisco documentation on, on all the different options and just know that you do have to uh, look at both ends of your trunk and make sure that they're going to communicate properly and that channel group 10 mode blank is is how you're setting that parameter of how they're communicating with each other so uh, interface gig 5 slash 2 we're doing the exact same commands here so what most people will do is put it into notepad and just paste it into the switch but I want to make sure you get to visualize every single command here exit out and then show the interface port channel 10. Then we'll show the gig 5 slash 1. And then show 5 slash 2. Okay, on to the next bit.
So here are the HP and the Cisco configs that we just entered, in case anybody wants to see those again. So the next section is OSPF and BGP. We'll start off with the HP device and then we'll go on to the Cisco device. Okay, so let's jump right into the OSPF config. So OSPF and then preference 110. This is something that you guys may not be used to having to set, but it is recommended that you set your preference just so that you are absolutely sure of what the preference is on that particular device. Then area zero, which is your backbone area, set your network and then wildcard mask. And then we're creating an area three with a network address of 3330 and a wildcard mask. And then we quit out of that, do a display this, and we'll see that we have created an, a uh, OSPF config. Preference 110, two different areas, area zero and area three. And uh, very, very simple there. So BGP, we'll go right into that. Create an area autonomous system 65111, network of 4440, and then we're going to set a peer statement of 1.2.3.4 with an autonomous system of uh, 65112, just to let you know where that peer exists in the world. Do a display of this, and we'll see that we have indeed created the BGP uh, autonomous system 65111 and network. It's undo synced, and it has a peer. Not uh, not very difficult here. Uh, pretty basic concepts uh, that everybody should be pretty familiar with that's ever dealt with either OSPF or G BGP. Okay, so now we're going to perform the, si the same tasks on the Cisco switch. So config T, then router OSPF, give it a number, and then uh, router ID here. We're going to set it to 3333. And then we're going to do a network statement. Uh, this is a little bit different. You'll notice that this is one command, whereas on the HP it was two commands. So here we say network, we give it the IP, the wildcard mask, and then area zero all on one line. You notice that in the uh, HP configuration we had the area and then the IP address, area and then the IP address. Um, of course, what is a demo without, without a typo? So of course we've got uh, typos here. Uh, fix that typo there, okay. We go ahead and exit out of the OSPF configuration. Once again, very simple OSPF environment and right into our BGP environment. So router BGP 65111 and we'll go ahead and set that network statement to 4440. Set our mask on this one uh, to just a class C and then we're going to set our neighbor statement. So neighbor 1234, remote AS, 65112, so it's the same uh, same neighbor and same remote AS that we did on the HP environment. Once again, nothing uh, overly complex if you're used to running uh, OSPF or BGP. So show run, pipe, begin, OSPF, and we see our uh, configuration. There we go. Scroll up there uh, of our OSPF environment, and then below it, our BGP environment. So the next section is OSPF and BGP. We'll start off with the HP device and then we'll go on to the Cisco device. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Hope you found it informative. And as always, please check back with the HP Switching channel on YouTube for more videos from HP Networking. Have a great day.